Video okay? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The saints of God from different parts of the country have come here to worship God and serve Him in truth. And God's Word will not be changed by a man or by a social group like the homosexuals. God's Word is everlasting. Jesus Christ Himself said, not one jot, not one tittle, will pass away from my word. That's the words of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, Do not know from the beginning, God made them male and female. For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. This is a New Testament doctrine from Jesus. So if you Gen Zers think you can ignore the homosexual contingent within your university, that is corrupting your student body, or you think a petition to, uh, to lower the sexual conduct standards or invite back a couple of homosexual pro uh, professors that have been previously let go, you are sadly mistaken. The Church of Jesus Christ is holy, holy, holy. No homosexuality allowed in the Kingdom of God. No transsexuality allowed in the kingdom of God. No necrosexuality allowed in the kingdom of God. No sexual perversions and perverts in the kingdom of God. Now, if I see the fruit meet for repentance, that is a homosexual calling out to God, please God forgive me a sinner, and being converted with a broken circumcised heart as scripture requires, about the blood shed for us. See, the blood of Jesus Christ is the great equalizer. Right? Unless you come through the blood of Jesus Christ, you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man is the kingdom of God except through me. That is Christ Jesus. No homosexual sodomite. No heterosexual sodomite will enter the kingdom of God. How will you escape if you neglect so great salvation in Jesus Christ? Hebrews 2 3 says. Hebrews 2 3. Hallelujah. Let's meet you. So Jesus Christ has gone before us to build a mansion for true Christians. True Christians are called the saints of God. Whether you're a Wesleyan saint or a Baptist saint, whatever kind of saint you are, uh, a Pentecostal saint, you are sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You must be born again from above by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ said in John chapter 3, verse 3, you must be born again of water and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is water from heaven. Bread sent down from heaven to instruct us and guide us in all righteousness. Now a week ago when my friend was escorted out of your temple of doom, when he was escorted out because his shirt says homosex is sin, Jude chapter 1 verse 7, because he was escorted out and threatened with arrest, Guess what we did? We came out here, we did what we always do. We preach. We cry aloud, spare not that my people turn from their sins. You don't know about that because you don't participate in it. And if you're not a Christian, if you're an active homosexual, you're not a Christian, you cannot give counsel to the gospel. Psalm chapter 1, I do not take this wicked counsel. Psalm chapter 1 says, blesses the man who takes not the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of the sinner, but his delights the law of the Lord. Hallelujah. I delight like a tree planted by the rivers of the water that brings forth fruit and its seeds and leaves for the healing of the nations. But you don't know about that. 
because you don't study God's Word. 1 Timothy 4 says uh, to, that uh, Paul told Timothy, let no one despise your youth. When we came here a week ago, I brought a young man. I love the youth. You young people have a strength that I don't have anymore. The Bible says the young man, that his glory is his strength. So I have no, I, I don't despise you because you're young, because you're a Gen Zer, but why do you despise the elders? Why do you put away the wisdom of a man or a woman that lived the Christian faith for 25, 35, or 45 years? Because you're not looking at your Bibles. You're not seeking to be instructed by the Holy Ghost. And this is the problem. This, and Rick Warren is a false teacher. Francis Chan is a false teacher. If you parents have high schoolers going in there to be mystified by these new apostolic reformation voodoo experts, then you need to get out of line, repent of going in there, and go home and get right with God. And all you college students that think you're going to influence this next generation to wickedness, you're right. But the Bible says a millstone is around your neck. And now it's about 2,000 pounds of stone. Jesus said it would be better for you to have 2,000 pounds of rock around your neck going to the deepest sea than to offend one of these little ones. So beware all you homosexuals. Beware all you pedosexuals. Beware all you sexual perverts that God is angry with. John chapter 3 verse 36. The Bible, Jesus Christ himself taught, if you have the Son, you have life. If you don't have the Son, you don't have life, and the wrath of God abides upon you. Yes, Daddy, you should be in charge of your child, but you're taking him to the wrong place, Dad. Taking him into his false teachers is not going to help his soul. Daddy, you should be ashamed. Daddy, don't go in there. Repent, Daddy. Stop this nonsense. So I want to say really quickly, a little lighter note maybe, in this uh, Asbury revival so-called, now it's changed to Asbury outpouring, this revival, revivals have some characteristics. One, there's public confession of sin. There's public repentance. They actually turn on that sin and then public condemnation of the sin they were in and prayer and worship but worship is the only thing most of the world is seeing of you now i don't need to see your confession jesus sees your confession if you're truly coming to him with a broken circumcised heart that causes you to flee the wrath of god to come cause you to flee that which God considers to be abominable. That is homosexuality. God considers homosexuality and actually any pride. But the homosexuals are taken over our streets. And they have these pride parades. And the churches march in the pride parade with the homosexuals because they're so loving. You're so loving while you approve and accept. But the problem is, you don't love God when you do that. You're choosing a piece of flesh over God who has put his word out to the entire world. And on judgment day, you're going to have eternity to regret these silly, moronic decisions, spiritual decisions, you say, uh, that you've done for your own life. You won't be laughing on Judgment Day, lady. You'll be crying, oh, Jesus, please forgive me. Jesus, don't command your angels to bind me hand and foot and throw me into everlasting fire. And the saints of God, well, we tried to tell you that Jesus is coming as a judge. His eyes are as fire. His hair is white as wool. His feet are brass, a furnace. His feet will stomp out the sinful, wicked things of this world. You have polluted your hearts, you have polluted your minds, you polluted this campus, you polluted this county, you polluted this state, you polluted these United States, and the Bible, and this whole world, excuse me. 
The Bible says in Romans chapter 1, verse 32, those who just approve of. If this young woman is, is not a homosexual, I say good for her. But she's approving of homosexuality and transsexuality. Thus, according to the scriptures, she is worthy of death. She and she and she and she, they, them, it, whatever it is. They, them, she, he, whatever. The confusion of your generation is astounding. But you know whose fault it is? It's our fault. It's the true church's fault that we didn't come out in the highways and byways and rebuke you, preach to you, rebuke you in Jesus' name. You need to turn from your sin and live. Turn from your sin and live. So I knew we would have evidence. I knew we would have evidence that the homosexuals are here trying to pervert the truth of God when it never will be so. When this place is burned down in ashes by God himself, and all of you homosexual will be given the account to Jesus Christ for your filthy, wicked gestiles, God will damn you eternally. God will damn you. Now you don't have no respect for what Jesus said. Jesus said, your hands on you, sin, cut it off. Eyes, pluck it out. Oh, you're a racist. I get it. He's a white man. No, you don't know me, woman. I'm part Cherokee and I'm part Irish. I'm not a white man. I'm not, I'm not a paper towel. I'm not a t-shirt. I'm a man of God. And Jesus Christ created a tribe, tongue, and nation. Acts 7, 17, the Bible says, from one blood, God made every nation of men. That is red blood. And guess what? Jesus is red blood was poured out on Calvary for you wicked races. I don't, I don't think this is One of the BLM crowd out there, or the CRT Wolf crowd out there, you need to wait to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I think this is your thing. I think this is your thing. That you don't even know Acts chapter 17. You don't even know these Bible verses. We've been quoting hundreds of them out here tonight. God's word gets the preeminence. Jesus Christ is the express image of God in the flesh. Jesus Christ is the logos of God. That's the word of God. But you simpletons, how long will you love your simplicity? How long do you children, wicked children, think you'll get away with this? You could die tonight. The Bible says appointed once to die and then judgment. One life, young people, is very serious. One life to live, one life to pour out in service to Christ and to our fellow mankind. And on Judgment Day, you'll know that those preachers standing on that street on this day in Asbury, well, excuse me, Wilmore, at this wicked university, Asbury, and we cried out, please be reconciled to Christ. As ambassadors in Christ, in chains, we beg you on Christ's behalf to be reconciled to get right. Humble yourselves before God, not before each other. No, I don't have to have a Gen Z or give me counsel. You need counsel from the Holy Ghost. Again, let me say it again so nobody confuses. We believe that some people have been confessing and getting right in there. There have been some people come to the community, other states come in, the holy place they believe by faith. I'm not saying it's not. But the problem is unholy hands leading leadership, leading worship. And the Bible says the worship of the wicked is an abomination to God. I'll say it again. So in the end of Psalms, the Bible says the worship of the wicked is an abomination to God. Think of the worst, nastiest thing you could smell. Like a rotten body, a rotten human body, you've ever smelled that, or a burned human body. It's abomination, it, it just, it's horrifying the smell of it. That's what you are to God when you do such wicked behaviors. When, when you want to use your temple in a way that despises, God despises. 
The Bible says our bodies are temples. Oh, give them a hug, lady. Make them feel good in their sin of homosexuality. Yeah, give them a, oh, it's okay. Don't listen to that guy. You know, he's so mean. That guy's so mean. See, there's the spirit of Jezebel on this country. The all you Jezebels and Ahabs out there, spirited men and women, you're the problem. You're doing it wrong. Keep your hands to yourself, lady. I would know I'm not here for your questions. You have plenty of friends. You talk to George. Talk to George. So I'm here to preach. So Jezebel spirited women, that's women that won't submit to their husbands as the Bible says they should. Women that won't go to their husbands for counsel and spiritual instruction, they go to another woman or they go to another man instead of their husband. Husbands, you should be ashamed that your women are not instructed by you and not submissive to you according to Christ in the Bible. And this is the problem of the age. This is the problem with this revival outpouring, whatever you want to call it this week. Well, maybe next week we'll call it Dead Bible. Again, there may have been somebody who actually gets converted. But your worship, if you're not a Christian, God's not hearing it. But let's be clear, if you're not a true Christian, God's not hearing your prayers. God does not hear the prayers of the wicked, but the prayers of the righteous He regards. That's a Bible verse I'm not giving you the address to, because I don't think you'll look it up anyway. I would give you the address where that Bible verse is, but I don't think you'll have enough care for your souls or the souls of your children to look it up. The prayers of the wicked God does not regard, but the prayers of the righteous He esteems. Yep. Bible verses. How about this one? This is about salvation. Now listen up, you young Gen Zers. They're so full of your snarky pride. Listen. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. The arm of the Lord is not short that it cannot save you. There's salvation right there. His ear is not heavy that it cannot hear you. But your sin has separated you from your God that he will not hear. So the first prayer that God will hear from you is when you bow before Christ in the Spirit, and then, oh God, forgive me a sinner, you offer up all my confession, all the sin you ever did. Oh Jesus, will you please pour your precious blood all over every sin I ever did, every lie I told, every sexual deviancy I ever did, every drunken rage I ever had, every, every wicked thing that I ever did in my life. Lord, would you please forgive that? Lord, would you please cover cover me with the blood of your Son? Would you please break my heart like your Son was broken on that cross? And when you come to that fertile place in your heart, and you come to that place where your heart's broken, then the seed that is the true gospel seed of God can go in and get watered by the Holy Ghost, and you'll become new. You won't be a celibate homosexual. You'll be a new creature in Christ. Hallelujah. All things are passed away. All these old things, all these old hurt and pain. Now for the homosexual community, those that are still active, I want to minister to you for just a minute. I want you to realize that God knows everything that happened to you sexually. Things that were done to you when you were a child, God knows about it. And if that pedosexual did not repent, that pedosexual is going to get what they deserve. Believe me, it's everlasting because our God is everlasting. And God wants to heal those wounds in your heart and mind about people that have abused you through your life, whether it's your uncle or your cousin or your brother, whoever it is, sisters, mothers, that have harmed their children through sexual misconduct. God knows it, and God wants to hear from you. He wants to hear from you. He wants to heal it by the Holy Spirit, not the unholy spirit. He wants to heal you in a way you can't understand or imagine. 27 years ago, I got healed from all the stuff that was ever done to me. And you can get that too, amen? Yeah, my father was a drunken whoremonger, and I hated him growing up because he left our family, he abandoned our family, and I turned up, I became just like him. The very thing that I hated, I became. I became a drunken whoremonger who didn't care about my wife and daughter, and I abandoned them for a whore. 
and many other things. I murdered somebody in 1979, very precious to me. And that murder was forgiven that day, August 3rd, 1996, when I bowed my heart and my mind. Oh, Jesus, would you please forgive me a sinner? And he did, by the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. I did not get off my face for hours, I don't even know how long it was, until I knew the Father has forgiven you, the Son has forgiven you. I got up and I was a new creature. All things have passed away, hallelujah. All things have become new. Air tasted different, the colors looked different, the world was different, and I had hope. There is hope in Jesus Christ beyond the grave. You all face the grave, you all face death. But Jesus Christ gives a hope beyond the grave. He's promised if we trust and believe in him, what he taught, his doctrine. Again, let me say it again, his doctrine is important that you understand it clearly. That you don't listen to, you don't have to listen to me. Go check your Bible. Go read your Bible. God will do his work. You know, young lady, I'm not here to take advice from women. I'm a godly man. I don't have to take a, a advice on how to preach from a woman. Even Saul became a Paul, baby. I read your Yeah, listen, too. baby. I, I'm not your baby. I'm happily married 27 years. I'm married too. Well, I'm glad. Where's your husband? That's my question to you. Okay, well, good. Well, submit to your husband. If you have questions about what we're doing, go talk to him about it like the Bible says you should. The Bible says, wives, submit to your husbands. Let's talk about that uh, genocide we have going on in the family in America. Wives that will not submit to their husbands because their husbands aren't acting right either. The husbands aren't submitting to Christ, so why would the wife want to submit to her husband? She would not. But you women, listen up. It's still there, whether you like your husband or not. The Bible says, wives, submit to your husband. Of course, I already said that. I already preached that. So of course you men should submit to Christ because you're not worthy to be followed or obeyed if you're not submissive to Christ. If you don't know the humiliation of the cross of Christ, then you're not worthy to be a, a husband, you're not worthy to be a man of God, you're not worthy to be a father of children or grandchildren. But if you do, if you do, then you should fill those offices properly according to the scriptures. The scriptures haven't changed because, uh, oh, our culture has changed, the things are new now. No, they had homos back in Jesus' day too. That's why they talked about it in court. That's why they dealt with homosexuality and uh, incest and all kinds of This man wants his father's wife. What? This son wants his father's wife. What? what? Yeah, that's, that's a pervert there. Necrophilia, these are the things we're facing in the culture. Necrosexual, bestiality, transsexuality, pedosexuality. Yeah, and all of this is fruit, wicked fruit, of an abominable educational system that has programmed these young people to believe it's okay to be gay. When the Bible says it's not okay to be gay, I'm going to sing a little song, kind of like the move a little bit. Maybe George will join me. Ready, George? Here we go. It's not okay to be gay. It's not okay to be a homo. Not in your DNA. God says it's a real big no-no. Oh no! See, I told you I'd like to move a little bit. Right, Jonathan? Amen. So, again, last thing I'm going to preach on somebody else is we don't want anyone to go to hell. The Bible says, more important than what we want, the Bible says, God does not desire the destruction of the wicked, but that they turn and live. That's your part. Your part is to turn from your wicked homosexuality or lying or drunkenness. You know, there's sodomites that are heteros, by the way. Don't you know there's such a thing as heterosexual sodomy? Oh yeah, there sure is. And God condemns heteros as much 
as he condemns homo for sexual depravity. It's depraved to have sex there. That is a septic tank. That is like waste disposal. It's not a sexual organ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise Yeshua. We were hoping you guys, we saw you when we first got here. We were hoping you guys would come back. Praise God. God is coming back to kill. Jesus is coming back to get sinners. If you're a sinner, when Jesus comes back, he's going to kill you. Oh my goodness, you should be scared of God. You should be, you should fear God. God hates sin. God hates homosex. Nothing is impossible for God if you're, if you're a homo, God can save you. Nothing's impossible for God. If you're addicted to butt sex, God can save you. Weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. I'm not talking about anal sex. I'm talking about hell. Weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth. God hates sin. We just came here to tell you today that God might hate you. I just came out here today to tell you that God might hate you. God hates sin. Jesus Christ hates sin. Shame on you guys for not being more loving. God is love. You guys need to understand this. God I really is love. It. Can you help me with the banners for a second? Just, just hold both of them for a moment. You need to understand. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, that's so Sorry, I thought you said both. Hey, Brother God Jacob, how you doing, love. brother? <laughs> okay, you got both of them? Almost sex Thank you, brother. Sex. Sorry, just give me a minute to shut this off, okay? And Praise God. God. Praise all workers of iniquity. Wow. 